Okay, my friends, there are some extremely rare, extremely bizarre, and unexplained phenomena that happens. Now, this is one of those really unexplained phenomena that is extremely rare. Now, this is a thundercloud, and it's interacting with a rainbow. And then there's another rainbow. It appears on the other side of the thundercloud, and it's like being pinched in between these two rainbows. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to discharge, and I'm, uh, it, I'm absolutely certain it's, it is a discharge against the rainbow. Now, what is, it, what is electricity discharged to? All right, you can have electricity, but it has to have some place to discharge to. Well, the rainbow must be made out of something for the light to discharge to it. Like, lightning goes to ground, and it will. Once it discharges to here, you'll see some of it come down here. Some of it will take off up in this direction. So let's think about what this all means. This is, this is pretty interesting, and it's very serious for my dipole electron flood theory. I have to be able to explain this. If I cannot, then my theory just doesn't hold water. What the fuck is that? Look at that. Boom. Boom. It's going to go over and over again. Let's just keep going until we finish off here. Look at these, and I'm going to explain them. I'm going to try to stop it as it goes. Okay. So here, it's just something is interacting between the cloud and and the light and the uh, rainbow. Of that, there's no doubt whatsoever. Now watch this. I'm going to try to catch it just at the right spot. Boom. Okay. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't get it to stop right at the right spot. But you see what it's doing? It's interacting with the rainbow. It's it's hitting into that rainbow. You see that? Now, this is, this is an interesting spot because it's hitting into the rainbow and then it's discharging to ground and it's hitting in here and it's going up the rainbow. Why would it do that? Lightning usually goes to ground. Well, then this is lightning. It has to be discharging from here to create this enormous glow. And the only way it can discharge into something that has dark matter, like the Earth, has, has mass. Earth is a ground, and lightning wants to get into this ground because it has the dark particles to attach to it. These must have a lot of dark particles in them. It has to have. Light, these three different colors of light, there's got to be dark particles in there for it to discharge to that. It's like discharging to a wire, discharging to a water pipe, discharging to a lightning rod. Let's watch it. Look at it go. Boom. And, but this is going up. That ha and, and, which is, means that it's, the light is filling in attaching to the dark particles. So there has to be more dark particles in the light, the, um, the rainbow, more dark particles than there are white particles. That's in my mind, that's what I'm seeing. I could be wrong. Boom, look at that one. Did you see that one take off sideways? As a thundercloud, and we know we know thunderclouds carry enormous charges with them. They quite often have huge thunderstorms, and then they also have cloud to cloud lightning. So another cloud may not have enough electrons, and it'll accept some because this one's just got way, 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 way too many. And another cloud will take some, so they go cloud to cloud, or they go cloud to earth. Whoever wants it more, or whoever is closer. Now. The rainbow has to have some form of matter. It's not just light, because this is light. Light does not like each other. They push each other apart. This is attracting and just boom, blowing up. And then there's so much of it at that point, it can no longer hold it here, and it comes down to ground. 
boom, straight to ground, boom, sideways, right to ground, boom. It's discharging and flowing down into the ground. And as it gets closer and closer, pow, pow, sideways, down to the ground, down to the ground. Very, very interesting display. I, I don't think too many people have ever seen that. I've never seen anything like that before. Okay, my friends, I hold myself to the same standards as I hold physicists to. Who is going to explain this? Who's willing to talk about this and explain this interaction between this, this thunderstorm and this rainbow and this glowing energy? What's happening? How did that happen? What's the interaction? What are the particles that are involved? What are the charges that are involved? All right, that's what I'd like to talk about. And the only way you can understand any of this stuff is if you understand dipole electron flood theory and the particles and their dipole nature. And that the black particle literally is ground. The white particles, which are electricity, which are lightning, static, electricity, the white juice, wants to get to this black ground, which is Earth, basically. And if you have electricity and you put it in, you hold on to that electric electrode, it will discharge through you, through the water molecules in your body and go, go right into ground, which is this. So in our, well, I'm not going to go deep any, because it's just silly. I keep going over this and over this and over this. No physicist will engage. This is just, it's crazy. And for all the other stuff I have, all the other uh, dipole electron flood theory, you know, there's no engagement. There's no engagement. I show all this stuff. The exact same particles as Fermilab has, we found them in light. We accelerated light. We split the light into the muons and electron showers. We did all of that stuff. I need a physicist, some big shot to talk. That's what I would expect. I'm willing to talk. All right, I love you all. Thank you. All right, I, this is the Crookes radiometer, and we're going to talk about why it spins one direction and then the other direction, depending whether it's heat or cold or light or dark. Now, and I want to mention another thing. I reported on this stuff the other day, and YouTube right away hit me, you know, be careful. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm not recommending, I'm not unrecommending, I'm not recommending anything. I'm just showing what the research was. This was a research article that talked about something to do with your blood pressure or something. I don't take any of that stuff serious. I look at it and then I say, here's what the report is. Now, this is another one. I don't take this serious either. It's, it protects us from deadly fungal disease. If you read the whole thing, it can do that in a petri dish. But inside your body is a whole different story. So I just want you to know that I don't pick them sides. I picked the research. I look at what they can present. And I did, if, to me, they didn't present anything that made any, you know, they say it may be able to be used topically on fungus in your toes or whatever. And it might. I don't know. I can't say yes. I can't say no. I want to see the evidence. But I, they, they didn't present any. You know, this has been a 150-year mystery. Nobody can solve this. And there's a lot of things to take into account. First of all, there's very little gases in this, it's a vacuum chamber, but not exactly a, a vacuum. There has to be a certain number of particles in there, but not just like here, where there's a lot crushed together. Here, it's they're open. There's not a lot of actual gas particles in there. So the thing can spin much more freely. And it's on this very pin so that it can f spin. Now, what else is at play here? Well, we got some glass. The light's got to go through that glass, and that glass is going to interact with the light. And you say, well, no, glass, you just get behind it, and it's just glass comes through, and you see the light. No, that's not true. That is not true, monsieur. What happens is if you get behind glass, you won't get a sunburn. In, in most cases, let's, let's go with, if you're out in the sun, you get a sunburn. But if you come inside in that patio glass door and sit there, you won't get a sunburn. Something is burning you. Well, what would burn you? 
outside but not inside. It has to have something to do with the glass. I, I think you might agree. All right, the reason you don't get a sunburn if you're on this side of the glass and outside is where the sun it hits you with all of the UVA and UVB rays. Those are the ones that cause the damage primarily. And this is up in the ultraviolet. Above where are visible. We're, we can only see this bit of, of these frequencies of light. UVA and B just means, well, let's see what it means. There's two of them in this. And then you hit the ultraviolet disaster or catastrophe, I guess they call it, ultraviolet catastrophe, right here, and then it's gone. There's no more white particles left. All you have is the black particles that cause the X-ray and the gamma rays. All right, so we know that the glass can stop the UVA and UVB rays. So when you're on this side of the glass, you don't get hit with those rays, and they are both cause the skin to get aged and inflamed and skin burn. One of them is deeper than the other. So one of them goes inside your skin. You really don't feel it on the outside of your skin that much. Uh, but the other one burns your skin. So what is, makes up a UVA and a UVB wavelength? What are they? What is it made out of? And why are they different? Well, there's different, a different frequency. This is ultraviolet. And a UVA is it's not quite as spinny. The UVB spins faster and then you hit the ultraviolet catastrophe and the white just goes. And all you have left is the X-rays and gamma rays which are the dense particles. That, that's why you can see the bones and everything in your body with X-rays and so forth because you're, you're bombarding your body with these particles. And I'm going to tell you something right now which I don't think they've ever considered. It has to affect the, the bacteria that's in your body, these are bombs to bacteria. I would love to see them do a test on somebody, find, do fecal swabs on them and see what bacteria is in your body now and then go do your x-ray and then a day later see what bacteria is left in your body or, or has anything changed. And I got a feeling you're going to see some bacteria is, is changed. It would have to. The bacteria in your body create the enzymes, and the enzymes create the stuff that makes you alive and digest food and have your immunity. This all plays together. This is a very important research, this understanding light and, how, and, and the exchange of these tiny particles within matter of every time, biology and all the whole nine yards. Okay, I might have mixed them up for UVA and UVB before, but here's the deal. You got infrared is very slow, then visible light. We have all these different frequencies that bounce back and forth to give us different colors, like this spectrum right here. We're shooting the same light at it, but we're getting all kinds of different colors because of the material that's bouncing that back. But, but there's a, a very nice set of frequencies to do that, to bounce back at these certain um, molecular configurations. Some stuff's hard, some stuff's soft. Let's just figure it that way. Now, UVA is down here. It's not quite as fast as UVB. And then UVC is even faster than that. And then they're calling vacuum UV. I don't know what that's all about. But at a certain point, you get the ultraviolet catastrophe, which means the glowy stuff goes, the energy comes here, not so much energy. And then when it gets here, you got energy, 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 energy drops right down to nothing, which is no more glowy stuff. But the heavy duty stuff is still there. That's what kills you, gamma rays and so forth. Very heavy.